Hey YouTubers, wanted to do uh, a <clears throat> little bit of an informational update on these Quantico 195cc cylinder heads, traditional small block, 23 degree. Um, the more I've been able to work with these heads, the more impressed I am with the casting and the finish work that the uh, whoever did the finish work on the seats and uh, attempted to blend them and all that. Um, I've mentioned in previous videos, <clears throat> excuse me, I've mentioned in previous videos that I've run into pretty decent discrepancies on the uh, negative side when looking at like pro comp cylinder heads, renegade casting cylinder heads, where let's say you bought a 190cc cylinder head, but the actual intake runner is only 180, not more than 185. You know, we're talking low 180s on the CCC, where you're thinking that you're buying an as-cast 190cc cylinder head. So, you know, with those pro comps and the renegades, a lot of times <clears throat> you're not getting what you actually paid for, what you thought you were getting. Well, on these Quantico 195s, I was absolutely amazed that 190 for an advertised, we'll just go ahead and say that, an advertised 195cc cylinder head, I'm thinking, okay, if we can get 190 or better on the uh, pre-work CCing of the intake runner, that wouldn't be bad. <clears throat> well, as I stated in that first video, it was 203 cc intake runner before work. <clears throat> I'm like, okay, that's different. You know, that's not something that I'm used to seeing. Um, one, another area that I wanted to point out was inside this, this bowl cut. Like you have your valve angles for your seat, but then you got your bowl cut. It was set up exactly how I like to sit, to see a cylinder head. You know, <clears throat> a little over, like it'll be, a, it'll be real close to 90% on the intake after sanding rolls. And then the exhaust side will be almost 87. Cause I believe it was 86% like pre-work they had it set at 86% on the exhaust, 80, I want to say it was 89.4 or something to that effect on the intake side. That's big step up from like a Pro Comp or a Renegade or some you know place like that. Another area that was absolutely a step up was the transition from your from your um, seat into the bowl. A lot of times you'll see huge steps just below the seat. You'll see huge steps of aluminum where they've done their pseudo bowl cut just past the seat or a part of their finishing process where their machine just goes down just arbitrarily touches the aluminum and you think, oh, look, they tried to blend this. No, that's just where their stupid seat cutter happened to run into their poor casting and it made it look like they tried to blend it when in reality they didn't. <clears throat> so what was really cool about these heads was that they actually did a bowl blending cut all the way down to the, um, I guess you'd call it the tail on the guide boss. So there was an aluminum lip. There was an, a lip down inside of the intake bowl but that lip was only where it transitioned to the, what we're gonna call it the backside uh, valve guide boss tail, which is awesome. I mean, you know what I mean? I'm cleaning all that up in, during my process, but for an out of the box as cast head, to have those kind of numbers on the intake bowl cut, exhaust bowl cut, plus at least have a, a workable, usable uh, factory bowl blend. You know, you don't usually see that kind of uh, attention to detail until you get into like the Dart heads or the Brodex or, you know, AFR, one of the bigger name brands. 
So <clears throat> these Quantico heads, you know, when he took them into Nolan's machine, head, head service or whatever it's called, uh, to have these little holes drilled for the 400 steam holes, he had to have holes added for the steam holes because going, they're going on a 400 small block. They said, these heads look like darts, you know, and I agree with them. These heads look like dart casting cylinder heads. You know, maybe the people who produce those dart castings or, you know, maybe their agreement with dart ran out and they started selling them to somebody else. I don't know. I don't want to, I don't want to guess on that, but you know, you guys make your own conclusion. But I wanted to show you on this exhaust bowl, in this area, you can see, see that shiny place down there in the back side of that bowl? That's where they have had a machine go in there and try to transition to the casting. Okay, that's not a problem. It's a little undercut. I mean, it's a little undercut from the seat, which doesn't really gain you velocity, but it does add a little bit of volume. Because normally on the back side of your guide on the exhaust side, you don't want to dig, you don't want to go way down in here and make this deeper. You want that air, that hot air to hit this thing, boom, and get out of that port. But the fact that there's no aluminum lip all the way around, there's no lip of aluminum like you see on a lot of the lower, what I call low quality casting. It's just amazing. I mean, you know, these Quantico castings are runnable. I mean, they're not going to flow to their potential. And they do have some little rough goobers, like down in the port. You'll see roughness here. And then I've gotten some out of the intake ports. There's been some pretty good size uh, quarter inch style, like what I would call them globs of aluminum or whatever, that uh, just happened to be there on the casting lines after they pulled it out of the mold or whatever but <clears throat> to have a bowl straight out of the box it's actually been transitioned by the factory that's selling these heads that's pretty cool i mean you, you know i mean there's you know various levels of um <laughs> i'll call it pseudo bowl blending below the cut because like on the far end let me see if i can rotate you guys without getting you too sick like see that far right side exhaust bowl, there's no, there's no undercut. Like just because of the, the what I'm gonna call variations in the actual casting process, when they did their uh, valve job on the seat, they didn't have, like I'm sure they went ahead and ran the machine through the hole to try to um, blend that into the port but because there was a variation in this casting, the machine didn't touch any aluminum. It's still, you still don't run into aluminum inside that bowl, but it doesn't have that undercut area that you see on some of these other ones. See, that one has it, that one has it, and that one on the end, because you can see the shiny where they've done their little bowl blend, or you know, they're gonna call it a blend, where they're coming off their seat and trying to blend into the casting. So that just goes to show you the slight variances that you run into when you're looking at your bowl blends and your bowl, your castings and all that good stuff. But I'm basically cleaning up all of that, I guess, rough casting. That's the only thing I can think to call it. Just that super rough casting that's in there. I'm going to clean all that up, smooth out the guides a little bit more. That's another thing. These Quantico's have really nice uh, design to their valve guide bosses inside the ports. I mean, you know, I'm going to clean them up and, and narrow them down a little bit more because I would, I would almost guarantee these are going to end up being a, I would say a 205 or slightly larger CC intake runner and I'm not sure but we might be pushing close to 80 cc on the exhaust. I'm not 100% on that one. But, uh, you know, if I, I'm going to say this, if I was going to build an old school small block 23 degree heads, I wouldn't hesitate a sec to buy a set of these Quantico heads 
because they're leaps and bounds above what I've seen out of the other, you know, overseas uh, cylinder head castings, and they're just they're almost half as much as like the name brand AFR, you know, big name dark castings and all that junk. I'm really impressed. I mean, you know, every once in a while you come across a company that actually offers something that's worth the time and the effort to, to put it on your engine. You know, if, if you're gonna spend 500 to $800 and end up with a junk set of heads that doesn't run much better than just a factory cast iron head, then it's really not worth the money, is it? But, you know, I just wanted to do a little bit of an update of where I was at on these heads. Um, it's smoking hot this week. So I'm not able to work on it near as much as I really wanted to. Plus, uh, I can only work about an hour and a half, two hours at a time because the stupid tools are starting to cause my hands to go numb. I've never had that problem before. I don't know if I'm just getting too old or if my die grinder needs to be replaced. I've just noticed this last couple of weeks that that die grinder for some reason is making my hands go numb and I don't think I've I absolutely sure and certain that I've never had that phenomenon before so maybe I need to look into that and find out why that's happening so anyway uh, I appreciate you guys watching my channel hopefully you guys can uh, pick up on some of this porting information even if you're not gonna port cylinder heads yourself at least you become knowledgeable of what to look for when you go to look at a set of heads or if you talk to someone you know locally that's talking about doing some work on your heads or whatever the case may be maybe you go to a swap meet and you go to buy a set of heads and you can you know identify hey has this head been worked before does this look like this person knew what they were doing you know whatever so hopefully this information is helpful to somebody and uh, hopefully you guys are out there building some horsepower and enjoying it while the weather's nice if not, take advantage of the winter and come back twice as fast next year, right? So, I appreciate you guys watching. Hit that uh, subscribe, share. Uh, always hit the little bell so it, you know, it, it will tell you when I post another video. That way I'll have an opportunity to have you guys watch it. So, anyway, thanks again, guys.